Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Chandra, can you read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please? On Wednesday, January 8th, 2020, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Icarpa Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Icarpa Township Clerk and posted on a bulletin board in Township Hall. Advertised instructions of this virtual meeting were posted on our website and on social media on Friday, August 14th. Thank you. May we have roll call? Mr. Ellis, excuse me, Mr. Dallabarca? Here. Mr. Ellis? Here. Thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? I've seen her check in yet. Uh, Mr. Price? Mr. Price is here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Summer? Here. Thank you. Mrs. Salagi? Here. Mrs. Bird? Here. And Mr. Castellano? Here. Okay. May I have a motion to go into executive, please? This is Mr. Price. I make that motion. I second, Mrs. Sullivan. Okay, Mr. Price, Mrs. Sullivan, uh, all in favor, and uh, we'll see you on the other side in the other call. Okay, it is 7 p.m. I'm going to call this meeting to order. And I'm going to ask Ms. Anaya if you would please read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Wednesday, January 8, 2020, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Egg Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Egg Harbor Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Advertised instructions for this virtual meeting were posted on our website and social media on Friday, August 14th. Thank you. Uh, may we have roll call? Mr. Delabarca? Here. Mr. Ellis? Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. Mr. Price? Mr. Price is here. Thank you. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Summer? Here. Mrs. Salagi? Here. Mrs. Bird? Here. And Mr. Castellano? Here. Okay, at this point, uh, when you see the flag on your screen, we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome everyone to our August regular business meeting, uh, but this is by no means a regular meeting. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, you will notice uh, that the meeting appears different. We're in tile view, or as I like to call it, the Brady Bunch view. 
So hopefully members uh, at home uh, watching uh, live or recording will be able to see us all a little bit better. Um, we have some very important business to discuss and take care of this evening that um, relates to the times that we're in and I just have a couple of quick remarks before I introduce uh, Dr. Gruccio for, uh, for her report. The, the pandemic we have seen in 2020 is uh, like nothing we've ever seen and the circumstances have been nothing short of devastating for school districts across the country um, and for nations around the world. Uh, I want to just briefly lay out where we are in our return to school effort. You'll all remember in June the state issued uh, a road back plan, a road back to school plan, and we followed that plan. We followed it to a T. In that plan we were required to submit a plan to the state that included in-person instruction to some extent. We had no choice in the matter and we did that. We put a road back to school committee together and I want to take a moment to again thank everyone who participated on that committee, the outstanding staff effort that went into it. Um, it was absolutely outstanding and I believe we put together the absolute best plan this district could have put together. And so I thank you all for it. The plan will remain a vital guidepo guidepost, a vital part of our um, planning moving forward. Now, last Wednesday, the governor threw a curveball to every school district in the state of New Jersey because what he did was turn that road back guidance that was initially issued upside down. Now according to Executive Order 175 we can only begin in-person instruction if we can certify that we have met certain specified health and safety requirements that are related to COVID-19. That was a major change and that came at us very, very late, very, very late in August and gives us very, very little time to work with. So now we must reevaluate and that's what Dr. Gruccio uh, will be presenting about in her superintendent's report. Uh, I know that uh, our administration has been working even more feverishly since last Wednesday and the updated uh, guidance came out uh, even though they had already uh, just as all of us had ha have been working uh, pretty much since this pandemic began but last Wednesday took it to a new notch of the complexity and the level of work required of everyone and I want to thank them for it so before I turn this over to Dr. Grucci, I just want to remind uh, everyone of, uh, I think, the core beliefs that I have and I think we all share that the health, the safety, and the welfare of our students, our teachers, our staff, their families and loved ones remains a top priority among top priorities. And with that, I'll ask Dr. Gruccio to uh, begin her presentation this evening. Well, thank you, Mr. Castellano. Uh, thank you for laying out the groundwork and uh, helping prepare for the presentation that I am about to uh, share with the Board of Education and, and the public. Um, I will let you know that um, there's going to be a lot of me talking over the next few minutes. Um, I spent many, many hours researching, conversing, and contemplating but um, I'm finally at peace with myself and um, I am going to right now attempt to present a window um, that I have here as long as my computer 
cooperates. Can you all see this? Please say yes. <laughs> Can we see this? No. Not no. yet, Doc. I think it's right in the middle. No. No, it's not right in the middle, huh? Okay, share. How about this? So, why do I have this trouble in front of the board? I am going to present a tab. Here we go. And you pick the tab. And I picked the tab, and I got it. Okay. There we go. There we go. How about now? Yeah, yes. it's, kick, it's Good kicking. Good job. There it is. Yep. yep. I have to go to present mode, and we'll get right there when I go up to slide one. And here we go. Okay. So here we go. As I said, I apologize. There'll be some a lot of talking here, but. Again, I put a lot of time into this presentation, and uh, I ask you to just be patient and to listen uh, carefully. So, as you are aware, we have worked very hard to follow the orders from Governor Murphy and the New Jersey Department of Education. This began with the Road Back to School document that was released seven weeks ago. In that time, we have researched this 104-page document and the four categories that demanded we create a plan for in-person instruction and be ready with a plan for remote instruction and remote learning in case we need to subtly pivot to all virtual instruction. That was the guidance then. So we did just that because uh, we are always, uh, we always give 125%. We had input of 800 stakeholders, 11 committees and the district road back to committee. Allow me to pause here to thank each and every one of the stakeholders who participated, who gave their time, gave their feedback, and shared their passion and knowledge to help us with this project. You helped us create a relevant plan for the return to school, but also remember you gave us guidance on the virtual learning model. Your feedback from our experience in the spring was vital. You gave us feedback for improvement. In a five-hour meeting, we reviewed every section of the Road Back to School plan, and we built our plan upon the minimum standards outlined at the time by the Department of Education, including an all-virtual option. This plan was sent to the New Jersey Department of Education re for review. I sit here still waiting for feedback. It's August 17th. Another noted fact is that there are a few questions submitted to the Department of Education that have yet to be answered. September is 14 days away, nine of which are work days for us. Since then, we have continued our preparations to open our schools in the safest and healthiest way possible. Following the rules as we always do, we re released a survey asking our parents to commit to in-person instruction or virtual instruction, as well as transportation or no transportation. Much time was spent disaggregating this survey data so that we can then take the in-person commitments and schedule students into cohorts of AABB. This created the need for development of an abbreviated school schedules and teaching schedules that had to be balanced and aligned so that if we all had to pivot at any time to all remote learning, it would be an easy transition for all students and staff to move from in-person schedule to a remote, remote learning schedule. And I pause again to thank the administration and administrators who spent endless hours in creating these schedules. Um, the thought process was amazing and I thank you because I've done it without you. As Mr. Castellano said, there has been changes since the road back to school guidance. On August 3rd, the Department of Education released a checklist for the reopening of schools that outlined 12 areas that had to be reviewed and implemented by school districts. I want to stress that this checklist comes with no trainings or explanations for school districts. Usually, the Department of Education holds training meetings. An example is when we go through New Jersey CUSAC evaluation. The Executive County Superintendent and DOE that he represents holds department meetings to train administration in the process and the expectations and how they need to be met. But being the team players that we are, we began to try, try to navigate with blindfolds on to adhere to the checklist items. On August 13th, more change came when the governor released the executive order 175 and the Department of Health released guidelines for local health departments. 
Let me take this time to share that Executive Order 175 says, all school districts that reopen for full or part-time in-person instruction must meet the following health and safety standards delineated in this Department of Health's checklist for reopening of school 2020-21 and detailed in the Roadback Restart and Recovery Plan for Education, which includes, but are not limited to the following, social distancing, PPEs, face masks, cleaning and sanitation, facility, facilitation of hand washing stations or alcohol-based hand sanitizer, bus procedures, staff and student screening, protocols if someone becomes sick, a plan to ensure facilities have adequate ventilation, plans for athletics, physical education, choir and music classes, and contact tracing. It also says if a school district is unable to satisfy all the requirements above, a district may provide full-time remote instruction for all students. The district must provide a plan to the Department of Ed as what still needs to be completed when the anticipated completion date is and when the expected return to school date is. The most recent documents, specifically the Executive Order 175 and the New Jersey Department of Health guidance provide instances of conflicting information and also provide information that is in conflict what the Atlantic County Health Department of Health has previously provided to us, as well as providing information for the first time. Here's an example. Executive Order 175, page seven, number two A states, at least six feet distance between individuals in all settings to the greatest extent practical or social distancing modifications. The New Jersey Department of Health COVID-19 public health recommendations for local health departments for K-12 schools dated August 13th, page six states, face coverings are not a substitute for social distancing. As a result of the conflicting information from both of these documents, our questions is which one takes precedence? I'm still waiting the answer. The De New Jersey Department of Health the m states, the more people a student or staff member interacts with, and the longer that interaction, the higher the risk of COVID-19. And then in the next section states that groups of students should stay together and, are, and should be with the same teacher throughout the school day, and groups should not intermingle. The Atlantic County Department of Health says that they will notify us if students are positive. The New Jersey Department of Health says parents and staff are, are to notify school districts directly and then we notify their contacts and report to the local Department of Health. The executive order speaks to cloth face, face coverings. This is new information. On top of all the confusion, the Department of Education just recently released an attestation form to be signed by superintendents to attest with certainty that our plan will meet what I see as all of this conflicting guidance. This attestation form is a checklist of yes and no responses where this limited response could place school districts in a position of assuming unreasonable liability for students, staff, and community because of now the multiple state and federal directives have changed. I will now put myself or my Board of Education or school district in this position. Let me speak about our educational advocates, and we'll add this to the convoluted information. Educa educational advocates, the New Jersey Association of School Administrators, the New, Jer New Jersey Principals and Supervisors Association, and the NJEA released a joint statement that simply states that schools are not ready to open because the guidelines are not achievable under the current conditions. And this includes inadequate funding, PPEs, contact tracing, unknown and unanswered questions. These associations are recommending all remote learning for school districts to safeguard students and staff from this highly contagious and lethal virus without the needed tools and trainings. The lack of clear guidelines and detailed protocols for monitoring, contact tracing, and notification is a sincere concern. The New Jersey State Association of School Nurses endorsed all remote start for the school year to give schools the extra time that they need to ensure that health and safety protocols are met before students and staff return to in-person learning and to help manage the spread of COVID-19. Our Atlanta County School Nurses still do not have direct and set guidelines and have called for a meeting with the Atlanta County Department of Health, which I believe is occurring to tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. 
In addition, we just received a letter from the president of the Egg Harbor Township Education Association also seeking a remote start for the school year. Other feedback that I have gleaned in my research. I've been in tune with the news, the governor's press conferences, and feedback from concerned citizens. The governor has stated that the virus is rampant inside buildings, hence no indoor dining is allowed. Schools could shut down if they have two or more COVID cases in different classes. The state commissioner of health stated, everyone is confused because this virus is confusing. We are looking into how this virus affects children and adults. It changes, it changes because this is a very efficient virus and knows how to move and transmit significantly. She enforced social distancing, masking, and good hygiene for schools, but when asked about indoor dining said, this is a droplet virus and can easily be transmitted quickly in a dining room. Dr. Fauci said schools could have classes outside as much as possible. Now we know that cannot happen in New Jersey on a consistent basis. He also said, if you want to open, do what you need to do. The CDC says that school officials should make decisions about school reopening based on the available data, including levels of community transmission and their capacity to implement appropriate mitigation measures in schools. Most recent COVID-19 report um, that was shared with me from um, NJDOH, where they've created six regions in the state of New Jersey. We are in region southeast, and today the southeast is second. Dr. Right Jim, if you yes. wanted to share that screen, I think you have to hit that tab. We still just see the blue screen. I wasn't sure if you were going to present. Um, I am. I sound like you were referencing the document, that's all. Here you go. How's that? Does that work? There you go. There we go. So this is a document that was shared with me um, by the Department of Health, New Jersey Department of Health, who's created six regions in the state of New Jersey. We are the southeast region, and we are considered moderate at this time. Um, but I will tell you that we are second to the southwest region um, in, the, in the highest cases of New Jersey COVID cases. All right, how do I get out of here? and go back. Are we, are we back to my uh, slide? You have to share your screen again, present now. <laughs> Hang on a second. That's what I get for trying to be fancy, right? Tab. Here we go. Here we go. How about that? Are we here? Does everybody see that? Not yet, Dr. Cruccio. Oh, Chandra. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. There's my selection. There we go. Here we go now? There we go. Yeah, but you're, it's dark as mine is, right? Stop. Let me try this again. Mm -hmm. Bear with me. I don't know why it is dark. Anybody know why? Hang on. How are we doing? What do you see? You want to start from the top? We just see the um, gallery view again. So yep. present uh, now. Just start from the top. I'm trying, but my Chrome tab is spinning. How about now? Better? No. I don't know what to tell you. Dr. Grugio, if you're able to share that presentation with me, I can see if I have luck pulling it up. 
um, on one of my tabs. Here you go, Steve. It's coming your way. Good answer, Steve. <laughs> he always saves the day. Mr. Sanders always saves the day. Here you go. Sharing. I'm still going to try it one more time. No? We got it. Somebody put it up there. <laughs> yeah, you're sharing, Dr. Gruccio. Now just do hit present on the uh, slide itself. Hey, I did it. There you go. All right, almost done. OK, so we bring this to this slide. Um, we talked about the COVID cases. Um, just want to finish the COVID cases with the CDC also state that there's mixed evidence about whether returning to school results in increased transmission or outbreaks. That is in their CDC document. And they stated that more research and evaluation is needed on the implementation of the mitigation strategies used in school to determine which strategies are most effective. My feeling kids should not be the test group. Moving on to the leadership section. Um, I, I share this slide in this presentation with my administrative staff as I believe transformational leadership um, is, is the way to go. And as a transformational leader, I take pride in leading change. I take pride in empowering my staff. And I take pride in 100% believing in what my gut tells me. I take pride in believing the capacity um, for change. And transformational leaders have a vision for meeting current and future needs. A transformational leader has the ability to ignite change by confronting the brutal fact. In my profession, I find that we have to decide to be leaders or followers. And tonight, I, I, I stress the fact that I will be a leader. I am a leader. After many sleepless nights, um, a current state of nausea, and weighing all that we have done and what we need to do, I cannot follow and lead with unclear guidance. A good leader listens and learns and realizes it's time to take this school district off this bumpy road back to school and, and do what's right to ensure the health and safety of the students and teachers and staff. We have eight days left this summer. I can't wait any longer for guidance. We are too big of a school district. My mantra is, and we stress, there's a need for one voice and one message. And that's how I try to lead my school district. And it's important to my staff that they receive one voice, one message. And this should be just as important to the Department of Education and the governor of New Jersey. Change takes time and it involves training. We need time to prepare our schools, teachers, staff, students, and parents in the use of PPE, social distancing, and virtual learning. It's time to take control of what I can control and that is remote learning for all. Let us take this time to focus on an effective and efficient all virtual learning experience for our teachers and students. Let me be clear, I am not saying our schools are unsafe. I am saying that due to the changing and unclear guidance, lack of training, and lack of time, and in order to ensure that we meet or exceed the New Jersey Department of Education, the governor, the New Jersey Department of Health's expectations, Egg Harbor Township schools open as all virtual on September 8th and continue until October 23rd. We anticipate, based on the information we have now, that October 26th will be the start date for the Egg Harbor Township road back to plan, road back to school plan of hybrid and virtual learning options for students go and take go in place. Along the way, we will hold meetings to assess our current reality as well as our county's current reality and we will provide updates for the Board of Education and community at our monthly meetings. Our administrative recommendations. As an educator, I know the importance of schools and the critical role that, that they play in the well-being of children and communities. Schools provide critical instruction and academic support, social and emotional and mental health support, athletics, fine and performing arts, activities, special services for children, so all can be successful, and this is just to name a few. We are well aware that some of our students require specialized programming and services. We know that this is not ideal, and while we will remain virtual for the start of the school year, we are going to be providing information on utilizing in our in-person talents program and our virtual Aspire program for our families 
to serve as childcare during this time. And we will be working and providing in-person related services for our students of need. At this time, I know that we can ensure that um, spaces for these programs will have PPE and training in place for those who monitor them because they are of, in smaller settings. I want to assure everyone that this virtual learning plan will be different than what we had in the spring. The plan will be more structured. A student and teacher will have schedules to follow over an abbreviated day with time in the afternoon for small group instructions and meetings with teachers and students. Teachers will have time built in to be trained on building lessons. Students will have to attend four hours of instruction and attendance will be taken. Athletics and band will be allowed to continue while we are closed. However, we have heard from the NJSIA in sharing some new news that they will be sharing some new news this week about the fall season. So change will continue to happen and we need to be flexible to adjust. I will conclude with the need to remind you that we are the largest school district in Atlantic County with 10 school buildings, 7,300 students, over 1,300 employees. Even with reduced numbers, we are talking about a thousand people, thousands of people in our buildings. We need to be 100% prepared and confident. And, we, and I have, I also have concerns uh, with possible staffing uh, due to illness. Um, you know, where are folks going to get get substitutes? So um, that that is a concern I want to throw out there. Because while you may hear that neighboring school district in Atlantic County are ready to open in person, please think about their size. I direct you to school districts who are already committed to remote learning: Atlantic City, Vineland, Millville, Camden. They are large school districts. They need more time. So. I sit here and I hereby propose that one, we engage in full virtual learning from September 8th to the 23rd of October. We will review at the September 22nd in our October board meetings to see about our progress and if we are set to come in on October 26th. We will allow our time staff to focus on training, required requirements and, and, and to learn how to teach in a hybrid school schedule. We also need to focus on professional development for intense virtual instruction required by the Department of Ed. Please allow us to have time to have our PPE completely in stock and train our parents, students, and teachers to feel comfortable with its use and its non-use. Allow us time to better schedule students for in-person class rotations, work on our traffic flow issues within our schools as we await informational and directional signage, and we need to educate on all of these logistics. Allow us time for our government-sponsored technology to arrive. Also allow us to put our virtual learning plan in place with support for students and, and our staff and, and allow for a child care program to be in place. I stand behind my decision as the health, safety, and welfare of the students, staff, and parents are paramount. It is time that we embrace this current reality, embrace the construct of Egg Harbor Township, engage in working together, working together on our road with our Road Back to School Committee, our administration, our Board of Education, our Egg Harbor Township Education Association. And, and, and finally, to educate all about our plan, about the safety protocols, the use of PPE, and how to function in virtual learning environment. And finally, let us all be hashtag ready to serve our students and our staff. Mr. Castellano, that concludes my presentation. Um, I know it was lengthy, um, but like I said, I put a lot of research into it, and um, that's my proposal. Uh, thank you, Dr. Guccio. That, that was extremely thorough, uh, well thought out, um, and from the heart. And I don't think you can ask for any more than that. What I would propose we do now procedurally following uh, our agenda is that we would vote to affirm an update to our road back plan as outlined by Dr. Gruccio under 11.1, .1, which is old business. And at that time, we would have a full board discussion after a motion and a second. And that will allow us to proceed now to our student reps if they are present. It's summertime, so it's okay if they're not, but if they are, we will go to student reps, and if not, we'll go to public comment, and we will listen to all the public
comment uh, that anyone cares to offer. So uh, I'll first ask if our student reps are, are present with us tonight. Uh, Mr. Castellano, I have not seen them log in. I know they were invited, um, but did give them the option and I don't see them on here. Um, we usually don't have a summer update. I know we like yeah. to involve them, um, yeah. but they, did, they were invited. Okay. That's fine, perfect. All right, and so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead to, to our public comment. I wanna remind everyone that um, we do need your name and address. Um, we are going to limit comment to three minutes. Uh, and please be advised that we cannot discuss personnel or litigation. Uh, also, it may be that a complex question would require someone to get back to you with a response. Okay, we do have a caller, Mr. Casolano. Can you go ahead and state your name and address, please? Uh, Kathy Watson, EHPA present. Go ahead with your public comment. Thank you. First, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Crucio and all the administrators for this decision. I know it was not easy. I was in many of the meetings with you and shared the angst about what is the best decision for our students and our staff. There is no debate that we all want to be back to normal. We all want life to go back to the way it was. Every member of the EHTEA feels that way. Every person I've ever talked to out in the public feels the same way. But there is an issue we have never experienced in my career and the careers of many other educators that have taught for much longer than I have. And that is the coronavirus. We have to make decisions on what is best for the health and safety of our students. And notice I'm putting students first. Our mm -hmm. students and our staff and parents. The decision that Dr. Grucio and her team has made tonight mm -hmm. ensures we are taking those considerations that have been handed down by the State Department of Education, by NJA, and there might be like two other checklists out there, that we are taking them seriously, we are addressing them, and we are preparing our schools for a time when we can open up and feel that the very best to secure the safety and well-being of and staff. I could go on tonight, and as Dr. Fisher was talking, I was checking off for my speech here uh, of the items that she already listed. Um, all of what she said, there's so much information out there. One day you're being told you can do this, the next day you're being told you can't. So Dr. Fisher was faced with two letters one from the State Department and one from NJ that I sent her today. And in those letters, I went off to say, yes, she can more or less guarantee you. Now, some may have done that kind of letter out in the first place. But please hear me. In those letters, and I have not read the state letter, but I, I know the answer very well. In those letters, it was stated the things that have to be in place for students to return to school. We are not a, di a district where we have 10 kids in a classroom. We are a huge district, as Dr. Crucio stated. And to be able to have all of our school, our, our children come back on a hybrid schedule is going to require a lot of discussion, planning, and implementing protocol in place. We don't have the time for that. Nine days before school starts, before the staff is in, there's not enough time. Your staff is willing and able to do whatever they have to do, but they deserve the professional development that it takes for them to do that. And right now, we don't have enough time to get that in. With this added time of remote learning, we will be able to add PD for our staff 
to continue the ongoing education that the staff needs to provide the best form of instruction for the students of Egg Harbor Township. I applaud Dr. Gruscio and her staff for standing tall in this moment and choosing her students and staff over risking the health and safety. It has been no easy task. I can tell you, I have I have taken phone calls from teachers who love what they're doing, but maybe I should retire. Um, I don't know what should I do. I, I'm not sure. I love my teaching career, but I don't. I don't. I'm, I'm worried about going in the building. I'm I'm not sure it's safe. I'm not sure that um, we wouldn't be spreading the virus um, in every classroom. And the answers to those teachers, and the and the answer I gave most of them was, don't give up. Don't give up what you love. There will be a way. We will find a way that we can all be back and we can all be doing what we love and be with the children that we love. So though I know out in the public, there may I, I'm sure it's causing all kinds of angst on parents right now and people are scurrying to think of what they're going to do. But please keep in mind that the decision here was made for what is the safest way to protect our students and our staff. Again, I want to applaud Dr. Gruscio, and if I do not say that Steve Santilli is one of the best people in this world, <laughs> he will be forever angry at me. <laughs> but, but in earnest, I have worked closely with all the administrators, and I want to thank them for including me on meetings that I didn't necessarily have to be in, but I appreciate that they let me in. And they heard my voice, and they heard the voices of the members of the EHTEA. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Wazen, uh, very much. Um, uh, that um, item is, in fact, on the agenda, and I do want to remind future callers that this um, comment period is for agenda items. Uh, at, at some point, uh, my memory my memory has been jogged, uh, jog Dr. Guccio I think we may want to touch on the the talons piece and what we're going to try to do for families in the short term uh, whenever would be an appropriate time for that but we'll go if you want to do that now or go for our next caller or no, that that's a good point I apologize I did have that um, in my notes somewhere and here it is yes um, the talons program will be held um, at, th at the elementary schools between 7 and 5.30 p.m. Um, each day. Uh, there's a $25 registration fee and it would be $50 uh, per day and this is less than our area child care providers and we would issue a 10% discount for siblings. Um, we will follow the executive order 149 um, where it states that there needs to be a 10 to 1 ratio and this is for um, like the summer summer camps and child care that was in place over the summer with some school districts and camps. Um, there were um, 40 kids per site and it's first come first serve. It will entail health screening, social distancing, masks, meals, recreation opportunities, homework health, virtual learning, um, enrichment, and mindfulness. Uh, we will be reaching out to also some business partners in the district to see who would be interesting in, interested in hosting any what we call ed pods or parent pods, but um, this is um, something that we feel is important that we are offering our parents. And um, um, hats off to Mr. Santilli um, and Ms. Kristen Boyd, um, who have done a lot of work in a short amount of time uh, to get this information to me and be able to provide this to the public. So Mr. Santilli, um, I will allow you to add to um, that information if need be. Thank you, Dr. Gruccio. Um, first, uh, hats off to, to Mrs. Boyd. Um, in a very short turnaround time, uh, she was able to, to work feverishly to to be able to see what we can do to be able to best service the uh, community. Um, you know, this hasn't been an easy decision for, for, uh, for all of us. And ultimately, um, there are still a lot of factors that need to be worked out, but the end goal is going to be able to be able to provide a service um, to those in need. Um, I would suggest that, um, you know, the community continue to follow not just um, the district website and also social media for at EHTNJ schools, but also to um, be able to follow the talents 
um, web page uh, as well as their Facebook page. A lot of information will be forthcoming there as we put together the pieces um, over the next uh, week or so um, to be able to make sure that we uh, be able to provide a service that, that's gonna support the community at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Santilli, and, and also um, Mr. Castellano to, to add to some of the ideas that we have. I, I mean, there's some probably parents wondering like, oh my gosh, kindergarten kids or my elementary kids, even high school kids, I don't, I don't even know who these teachers are gonna be. We have a meet, greet, and get um, process um, that we're working on and please allow us some time uh, this week to work with our administrators. We have administrators meeting tomorrow of how children can um, come um, to probably an outside setup um, with proper social distancing, um, a scheduled appointments, masks in place and all that, and at least get some kind of idea of what their teacher looks like from the nose up um, and what the students look like from the nose up um, and at least be able to say, hi, you know, I'm Kim Gruccio, uh, I'm your, your um, you know, English teacher for ninth grade this year and the student to introduce themselves um, and then perhaps direct them to an area where they can get their textbook um, for that course and any resources that they need and then maybe go to a next section and then grab their uh, Chromebook if that's needed as well. So that's all, all in the works. Um, we're also um, looking into some social emotional um, um, uh, help, if you will, that we, possibly we can set up something. But um, I encourage parents, you know, case by case basis, we will work uh, to accommodate those social emotional needs as well as our specialized program um, for our special education students. So uh, that's that's um, stuff that we have thought about, we've discussed, and we, we are working on. Dr. Gruccio, can I um, interrupt and ask a question about the Talents program while we're talking about it? Sure. Um, okay, there you are. Who did you say would be in charge of the Talents program? Who's going to be responsible for the children? Um, that would be Mr. Santilli oversees that program with Ms. Kristen Boyd, who is the coordinator of our um, programs. Yes, she's so already. Teachers that are doing the instructing in the program. I, it, I would say it would be open to um, any staff, the current staff or teachers, if they would like. That's that's up to them. But we would also may have to um, advertise those positions. Uh, Mr. Santilli, have you discussed that? And yeah. So um, so ultimately, what would occur is uh, during the course of the day, of course, you know, the majority of our staff will be. Um, focused on virtual learning, uh, you know, since we are 100% remote. Um, so we will be working again um, to fill positions, um, you know, for our staff, for instance, like certificated staff or paraprofessionals or the like. Um, of course, after the virtual day would be done, um, we would certainly um, have them come into the program to be able to support like they normally would. Um, we are gonna be working to uh, come up with a resolution or solution for the actual course of the day when remote learning is taking place. So we're gonna work um, on that. Uh, in addition, uh, we have site supervisors at each location. The locations would be expanded um, based off of um, interest and need. Um, so for instance, right now we have the ability based on our license thing to hold um, uh, before and after care or really just talents care um, during the course of the day, um, either at Miller School, Swift School, Slay Ball, and Davenport. Um, typically, uh, before care would only occur at the three elementaries, and then we were uh, typically busing every, all of our students to Talons uh, at Miller for the afternoons. Um, that may evolve and change, and we may utilize all of those buildings to be able to, again, meet the needs of um, the guidelines that are provided through the state for before and after care programs like Talons. Um, you know, because we have uh, very stringent rules that we need to follow as well, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, different ratios, which are now basically, um, I believe, 10 students in a particular area uh, in proximity to an adult. Um, before it was higher uh, than that, but of course now with, with COVID restrictions, we have to adhere to that as well. So there'll be a lot of that information coming step by step, um, you know, information for parents to make sure that they are uh, comfortable. We've been actually communicating with a lot of our outside uh, providers as well to see what's been working for them and, and what doesn't work. Um, so we're learning from the things that they've had in place for the summer. Um, so that's been helpful. And, um, you know, again, we're going to follow those those guidelines, uh, health checks and, and, and the like, use of PPE and so on. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I was just curious because I know during the school year, our teachers 
usually head up the program. And I was wondering how they were planning, or how you were having them plan on doing that if they were teaching virtually. So that answered my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So thank you all for that. Uh, very, very important piece to this whole equation. And uh, remember, board members, we will we will be uh, having the opportunity to to do our uh, ask our questions and have our conversation when we hit uh, eleven point one on the agenda. So I want to go back and see if there are public comments on the agenda, and hear from any of our public. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. There is um, somebody on hold. Next in queue. Okay, please state your name and address. You are live streaming. Uh, yes, my name is Deborah. Oh. oh, we lost them. Sorry, one second. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, name and address was Derek. I, Sorry, name and address because you got cut off. Thank you. Yeah, sure. It, uh, Derek Sagliano, 1095 Summers Point Road. Okay. Go ahead with your public comment. Okay. My question pertains to those who um, paid a deposit for three-year-old preschool. I have two twins that we've already made the $400 deposit. Um, my question is, will that money be offered to be refunded? Um, should the school system um, proceed with either partial or full virtual learning? Thank you. Okay, I, I guess. We answer that. I don't know if we're answering or what we're doing. Have we can add it to our list of items that need to be addressed and, and answered in a Q and A. So we're gonna we'll, we'll make sure that we get that that answer to you as soon as we have that worked out because that that's a very fair and important question and we will get that to you and we will make sure that everyone knows the answer to that as well. Okay, you're live streaming. Name and address, please. Go ahead with your public comment. Um, okay, so I... Um, but my question is um, about technology um, and providing the students with the Chromebooks now that we're going full virtual to almost November 1st. Um, I know that the, in the springtime, um, being home with two kids um, and myself being a teacher in Galloway, we were like sharing devices and just having a hard time um, meeting deadlines. Um, I was just wondering how you were going to um, make, possibly provide the kids with Chromebooks that have all the apps and have things that they need on the Google Classroom on the computers, um, on the Chromebook, without having to go buy um, new ones. Um, and also, like, I have one in high school, and like, there's, I know that there were deadlines that had, you know, there assignment has to be done by 12 o'clock, you know, this day, and this day, um, and if there were deadlines and we're sharing devices, how that was going to be, um, you know, just dealt with. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yes, that does. I, and I, I think, thank you for that, and I think the short answer is we're going to do our best to get our Chromebooks and technology out to those who need them, uh, you know, absolutely. Um, and I'll see if there's any additional detail that uh, Kim or Steve might want to add to that. Yep, part of the plan. You answered it well. Uh, absolutely part of the plan. Uh, it may take another survey to see what people need, um, but definitely part of the plan. Uh, we, are, we are equipped and ready to um, distribute Chromebooks and resources that, that students need. So thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, we do have another caller. Uh, name and address, please. Um, Julia Hunter, 215 Winsome Drive at Carver Township. And your comment? Um, my first question, I have two questions. Is that okay? Go for it. Yep, three minutes. <laughs> All right. Um, 
Okay. Um, one is, are they planning on sending the special ed or the MD classes back into the buildings? And if so, or if not, how will that work for those kids and teachers? Okay. And your other question or comment? And my other question or comment was, last week it was discussed about having the meetings with the public again, and I want to know if the board will continue to stream the meetings as um, so that parents can still partake in them um, during this time when we're in a pandemic. And I also wanted to find out if there's a policy about board members being on their cell phones during the meetings, just because I found it really distracting last week. Okay, thank you. I'll go in reverse order. Um, so we are going to continue uh, to go by majority vote of how the board wants to conduct the meetings, whether live or virtual. Um, and But regardless, they will still be broadcast out to the public. So whether they are live or virtual, they will still be broadcast out to the public um, no matter what. Um, I, I and, and I, I hear your point as well, um, and I think that, you know, board members need to, you know, um, be focused on what they're doing when they're at a board meeting. You know, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, and on, on special ed, uh, I don't have that answer off the top of my head, but I'm going to look to our good doctor at least to get us started. Uh, yes, um, definitely part of our conversation, uh, Conversation um, really focusing first on the related services that uh, students um, need um, so that we are working. I know Mr. Santilli has worked with um, the um, special education department and it was a conversation that we all had this morning in our morning meeting. Uh, I don't know, Steve, you have any more? If you don't, it's understandable. But yes, we will be addressing um, uh, students and the specialized needs that they have um, in a plan that we would like to roll out. Steve, you have anything? Sure, Dr. Guccio. Um, yeah, we have been uh, talking about this at length. Um, ultimately, uh, what will occur is that if we're able to um, safely uh, support the needs of students, um, you know, with specialized programming uh, and services uh, in in-person setting, uh, we'll certainly do our best to uh, accommodate that need. However, that is uh, something that is going to be forthcoming. Um, initially, uh, that, that focus may be uh, started in a, in a remote setting um, with the possibility of, of transitioning in the future. Um, however, uh, our case managers, our special education supervisors and the like uh, will make sure that we are clearly communicating um, you know, to our parents to make sure that um, you know, we, we are transparent in, in meeting those needs. Very good. Excellent questions, and, and we thank you. And, and we will add these questions to our um, new repository of question and answers. Okay, I do have, an, I have two callers on the line. I'll just do one. Hold on. All right, you are um, live streaming. Name and address, please. Thank you. Stacey Donato, 20 Cloverhill Circle. Go ahead with your comment. Um, I do have a comment. I am an educator in Atlantic County. So I do appreciate all the hard work that has been done by our educators and leaders in education during this time. I have also always been very pleased with my children's education in the district, but for the first time, I am extremely disappointed in the position that the district and the unions have taken to choose to go all virtual. Um, I feel this is a disservice to our kids as far as their education and to their ability to learn and I feel that um, there are other districts who have had plenty of time to put plans in place and that the reasons we are now given not to open schools for even a hybrid education are simply excuses. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we thank you for your comment. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. Okay. If you want to mute your television, you are next. Um, name and address, please. Uh, Michelle Zinkra, 1118 Lakeside Drive, Edgar Township. Go ahead with your public comment. 
I wanted to thank the school board members for all of their um, work and commitment during this very difficult time. I am one of the parents who are very pleased that the district is going all virtual. I think that you're keeping the safe, safety of the children and the teachers uh, as your first priority. Um, one question I do have is about sports. Will fall sports be occurring this year? I didn't hear that. Will Thank fall you. Sports be occurring this so, year? Will fall sport, sports be occurring mm -hmm. this year? So I, I, I'll just start it. So I believe that uh, we're waiting, at least at the high school level. So at the middle school level, the Cape Atlantic League has canceled the season. But at the high school level, so far, uh, NJSIAA has not given word what they're doing. Uh, we're proceeding as if there will be, but even if NJSIAA cancels formal, we will still have our kids um, engaged in their activities to the greatest extent we can. Um, and I will pass that off for more detail. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, have Dr. Heary shed some, some light on that. He um, does have information um, on athletics, and he oversees our athletic department and um, is very well in tune with the NJSIA. Thank you, Dr. Grusho. Right now, there is a, uh, there's a lot of discussion going on in Robbinsville, the headquarters of NJSIA, in terms of what's going to happen with the athletic program. But Mr. Castellano did capture it, its current state right uh, accurately. We are into phase two of the training with our uh, football team. The other teams have began uh, their conditioning training. Uh, full practices will be starting soon, but they will stop on September 1st. Uh, part of the NJSIA regulations is that there'll be no extracurricular activities interscholastic sports from September 1st to I believe the date is September 14th. September 14th will start the traditional practice sessions with one scrimmage being permitted during that period of time. The athletic program or interscholastic athletic program will begin in earnest on October 1st. Um, again, if there's anything else that comes forward from uh, NJSIA, we will certainly uh, notify the board member and the school district immediately. Thank you, Dr. Heary. I do have another caller. Thank you for that and good answers. Hi, Jen. Uh, you are now live streaming. Please state your name and address. It's Jennifer Parmley, 128 Ruby Drive. And your public comment. First, I'd like to see that um, as I'm an educator as well in a different district, and I know the hours that everyone has put into making plans and trying to reform everything to make all of the educational situations best for our students. So I want to say thank you. I am one of the educators that 100% believes in-person education is detrimental to our students. Um, I would fight wholeheartedly to see my students. I am heartbroken that I don't know yet that I may not have the opportunity to meet my students in person when the school year starts because we have not received words that anything has changed at this point. Um, but that being said, I want the public to know that all of this that is happening, it is not the educator's fault, it is not the teacher's fault, it is not the administrator's fault. It comes down from the state, so please anyone that feels poorly about this decision, please don't take it out on the teachers or think poorly about them because I know that they are doing the best they can in this situation. Um, my moving past this, um, my daughter, she heard me speaking to my husband that she's not going back to school to start the school year and she broke down crying because all she wants to do is meet her teacher. She is going into second grade. Um, my son is starting school, new school in kindergarten. So I do want to ask, and I know it was mentioned before, to have some sort of way for especially the younger kids to have some sort of in-person meeting with their teachers. I think it's very important to make them feel comfortable um, and also to maybe even see their classmates. You know, it might be half their faces, but I really think that that would be important because, I, I mean, as a middle school teacher, and I don't know how I'm going to build rapport, and I'm thinking about my poor kindergartner and how is he going to build rapport. So if you could do your best to make an in-person um, opportunity for our students, again, specifically the younger ones, to meet their classmates, 
um, as well as your teachers in person. I, I mean, I know I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for that comment, and it's certainly something that we would take a look at. And I do have another caller in queue if we're ready for him. Okay. Okay, you are now live streaming. State your name and address, please. And your um, your address, please. One twenty nine Crystal Lake Drive. Go ahead with your public comment. Thank you for that comment. And if you want to mute your television, we are listening for your comment now. Okay. Hi. Um, I have a special needs child who is in a self-contained class. And I'm just wondering about what you are doing for those type of children. Um, we really, they are in a very small classroom to begin with, so they can do um, social distancing and things like that. And I'm just wondering if you're not going to do in-person instruction for these children, if you'll be able, if I will be able to send my child to a school district that is doing in-person instruction. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. We know that uh, we know that our special needs population is important, and that's uh, that's something we will be considering. Right, Doc. You got it. Okay, public comment. Please state your name and address. You're live streaming. Hi, my name is Mary Rybarczyk. I My address is 115 Swift Kennedy Drive. I had children in elementary, and now that we're going all virtual, this is even if we weren't going all virtual, but you had a couple of days that we were virtual, are the kids allowed to bring home or have worksheets um, or even, the, I know that you had um, like P Pearson's A paper workbook that they can work on because being on virtual the whole entire time is not good for their eyes, especially if the kid has gone to headaches. Um, so is there other ways that you guys are going to be teaching the kids um, through paperwork versus just all virtual for the six or six hours, however long it is? That's it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. I mean, good points, which we will consider. We're going to do our very best for you. Okay, you are now live streaming. Please state your name and address. Christoph Weissner, 336 Superior Road at Carlo Township. Go ahead with your public comment. Well, should, should I wait for my comments or? This is it now, you're live streaming right now. Okay. So go ahead with your comment. Well, I think personally that uh, keeping kids at school, uh, at home, Full time and doing the virtual, it's it's affecting their mental state. My, my son, who is going to seventh grade, um, he starts showing depressions, sign of depression, and and I think you know, this going to school would definitely benefit him rather than staying at home and doing the virtual school. And I think what what school and the district is doing in the entire state, it's it's ridiculous. And it's it's totally inappropriate because you know this is the kids' life and health at stake. And I personally believe that we are infringing on our on our rights with this decision, keeping the kids at home full time. Okay. And this is not only my personal opinion, but there are other you know parents that actually have kids in Ankara Township school and they have exactly the same opinion about this. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. We, we appreciate your comment and we all want what's best for our, for our students. And, and, I, and I just may add that we, we do have plans uh, for a counseling corner and to address social emotional issues. So, so uh, to the caller, um, I please encourage you to reach out to your school counselor, principal, um, whoever you feel comfortable reaching out to, and we will be sure to address your son, your concerns about your son and your son's difficulties. Um, just keep in mind, our schools are planning to get to the point where we can reopen. Uh, we just need some time and we just ask for some patience. Um, but again, your feedback makes us better uh, uh, at what we do and who we are. So, um, you know, I, I, I've placed that note here um, in on my notebook and um, you know, again, I encourage you to reach out to your school. We are here for you. We embrace with open arms, and uh, we won't. We don't want any of our children to feel um, depressed or withdrawn. Um, school is important. I recognize that, but the health, safety, and welfare of everyone, um, you know, is important as well. And um, again, I encourage you to make contact with the school. We are here for you. Okay, you are live streaming. Name and address, please. Amber, I'm um, 6512 Melrose. Go ahead with your public comment. Hi, everyone. Hey, everyone. Um, this is just a comment. I just wanted to, um, first of all, say thank you guys so much for allowing the kids um, at the high school to go back to sports. Um, the athletic department and nurses, they did a phenomenal job. Um, setting everything up and every day just having the kids come in, um, everyone stayed safe and um, just having a, a great opportunity, um, you know, being out there on the field. Um, second of all, I just wanted to um, share with you all, I, I know that this is a tough time that you guys are facing right now and, um, and I understand your situation. I understand we're the largest district and other schools around us are, you know, making their decisions and I, I know that that's hard um, for you all and I just wanted to uh, thank everyone um, for all the hard work you guys are doing. I know you're getting beat up out there and I uh, just stay, stay strong and um, know that, um, you know, we're all, we all just need to be mindful of, uh, you know, what's going on in the world but also that, you know, our children's safety is number one and anyone to, um, suggest that this board or this central administration um, isn't taking this lightly, but that's not true. I know you guys are working really hard, and I know that, you know, you guys have had your back against the wall, and um, I, I just appreciate what you've done for my girls and my kids, and, you know, for, for those um, that are thankful and, and have, some, have had some grateful hearts in this uh, district, I think that we need to start looking at things positive, and instead of getting on here and stating the obvious, we, we really need to rally together and kind of come outside the box and think creatively and I try to be more supportive. So just like, you know, my time's running out, I just wanted to thank you guys and, um, you know, um, where anything you guys are doing moving forward, um, you know, just know that there, there are a handful of us out there that are very supportive and we're thankful that you're trying your best and, uh, you know, just keep your chins up. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment. Thank you. Stay in touch. Don't be a stranger. We have another caller. Please state your name and address, please. Hi, my name is Valentina Strogonova. And your address? By Forest View Court at Carver Township. Thank you. You are now live streaming. What is your comment? Um, yes, I have a question uh, regarding my children. Um, one of them is going to the kindergarten, and two others are going to the second grade. Um, two of my children really struggled when they had to do everything virtually, and I'm really concerned about the kindergartner because he doesn't know how to how to use computers. He does not. He doesn't know how to read or write. So I would like to know what material you will have um, to help him learn that. Um, I guess that's my main concern. I would like to have some sort of sheet so he can practice that and someone more in person uh, attention so he can learn how to read. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment. And we hear you. And we will do our best for you.
Yes, Mr. Castellano, that is noted and that will be shared tomorrow in our administrators meeting. And we have another caller, please hold. You are now live streaming, name and address please. Hi, this is Kathleen Collins for Eleven A Oakland Avenue. I am a lifelong resident of EHT and a teacher in the district and I just wanted to say thank you to Dr. Gruscio for stepping up as a leader who's brave enough to make the tough decision that our governor isn't brave enough or willing to make for the health and safety of our students, their families, staff, administrators, and their respective families. I also want to say thank you to all of the administrators, Mrs. Wazen, and all those involved in this process for the many hours you put in and your dedication to our students, families, and staff in making the best possible decision in the current COVID situation. You have done the right thing, and I just wanted to do the right thing also by saying thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And we have another caller. Go ahead, you're live streaming. Name and address, please. Terry Alabarda, 206 Westwood Road, Ice Harbor Township. Go ahead with your public comment. Good evening, board and administration. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank you guys for everything you, know, you do. I know this was a really hard decision to make, and um, I honestly knew that um, eventually this would happen, and it's probably going to happen to all the schools. And like Amber said, thank you for letting the kids back on the field at the high school because it does really affect their um, their social and emotional health. And as um, as much as hopefully they can play their season, but I like the fact that you guys said there's going to be something going on even if um, the games are pulled. Um, the one thing I did want to mention is when you're getting together with administration to come up with a plan is – I just want to mention how important it is for the consistency for the kids to have to be on the um, the meets or the the classes at a certain time each day so that they're up and they're doing their work and as many in-person sessions as possible would also really be helpful. But the other thing I think that the parents need so that we're able to help our children since most of us are still working is we need lists of what is due each week from each teacher and that way we can keep on top of our kids to make sure they're doing what is necessary. But again, I want to thank you guys for everything you're doing. Thank you. We got it noted. Thank you very much, Terry. Thanks for the call and the comments. And we have another caller. You are live streaming. Name and address, please. Michelle Sawyer, 6 Gravel Bend Road. Go ahead with your public comment. I want to first thank everyone for all of their hard work and making these difficult decisions. Um, I'm a teacher in the district, and I'm just wondering, um, will we be able to get into our classroom to collect materials that we will need to do remote learning and um, possibly maybe even do some recorded lessons from our classrooms. Thank you. Thank you for that. Go ahead, Doc. Yeah, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. we, we will be, um, as I noted in my um, communication to the staff this past Monday, we'll be, we will be in touch about teacher schedules and expectations for teachers and when teachers can come in. Um, and you know what you need in your classroom optional uh, to be in your classroom so we'll be putting all that out for teachers and you have another caller
Okay, we have another public comment. Um, Mark Sr., I did lose you. If you want to give us a call back, I'd appreciate it. And in the meantime, we have a caller. Go ahead with your name and address. Uh, it was from Eric Bond. Um, so first, I want to thank you all for taking the time to hold this uh, meeting and fill us in with all the new information that we're getting. But when we first went all uh, virtual back in March, I felt that the students weren't adequately taught. Uh, so how are we better preparing the teachers to be teaching virtually since it is a, you know, a huge learning step for them? And I'm also wondering how, if we're making the students go virtual, how are we allowing fall sports to happen because it's uh, more in person or it's a higher contact risk? So how are we allowing fall sports to happen even if we're not allowing students to go in school where they'd be socially distanced and wearing masks? Okay, thank you. So I guess two pieces of that. Um, prof professional development, absolutely yes. Um, Doc, if there's anything you want to ask, uh, you know. Um, yes, I, I had difficulty hearing the whole question, but I heard something about um, virtual learning uh, schedule and how it would be different than the spring. It's absolutely going to be different than the spring. As you know, the spring we, we jumped in the – um, into that and then when we, we put something together the best that we can. Um, we want all students and teachers to be able to follow a schedule just like they went to were going to school. So that schedule um, will entail um, every class that they have in a day, uh, subject areas that they have in a day and our teachers will be um, provided professional development starting September 1 and it worked out through our plan um, from now until um, October 23rd and what I mean by that is there's going to be a day and an opportunity for um, our teachers to um, have professional development along the way to collaborate with each other to talk about you know the needs that they have but um, to the students you will be following your schedule so high school students they'll be ready to be up and ready to go to first period and you, you will follow your periods one two three four five you know through period eight um, until um, the abbreviate day ends, which is going to be probably around 12.30 or so. So those schedules will be released soon, but I assure everyone it will not be the schedule that you followed in the spring. It will be more like um, going back to school and being in school for the allotted amount of time, meeting with your teachers, going through your courses, um, and it, it would be virtual. But being prepared that when we go back, um, if and when we go back, whenever that may be, that it's an easy transition. So now that you're physically walking in the building, you know that period one, you have Mrs. Smith, period two, you have Mr. Jones, and you would follow that schedule. So we want to make that transition as easy as possible and make it um, relevant. And we, we want some sense of normalcy um, when we're in this virtual environment. Thank you. Thank you. And we do have another comment. Okay, you're live streaming. Name and address, please. Katie Coggins, 103 Seaside. And your public comment. I just wanted to call and um, thank Dr. Gruccio um, and everyone that worked so hard to make this decision. I know that it was not easy, um, and I just wanted to show my support and thank everyone because um, you guys are doing what's right. You're doing what is best for our kids, and I know that there's a lot of parents uh, complaining, but um, I know that you guys will work really hard to help every child um, in every way that you can. And I just wanted to show uh, my appreciation for all of your hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And we do have another caller. Go ahead, name and address, please. This is Mark Kodesky, 148 Blackman Road, Egg Harbor Township, and I'm the supervisor of the Arts Department for the District. Go ahead with your comment. I just wanted to uh, give a brief preface just to let the public know because I've received uh, numerous emails just since this board meeting has been broadcast that the Arts Department is, is going to continue along the same uh, path we went before with producing uh, virtual works of art uh, and making all sorts of accommodations, whether it's ordering air drying clay for a ceramic class because we don't have access to the kiln and using our two music technology teachers and our new digital music lab to make sure that our kids can still create music and also promote music. And also let you know that uh, 
you know, we have asked the superintendent that whatever whatever the governor says is allowed for outdoor activities is also going to apply for the marching band. So as long as there's gatherings of, of people allowed outdoors, regardless of, of whether the, the doors to the physical buildings are open or shut, uh, we plan on contributing to our community and, and keeping that activity going for our kids and working with the administration uh, to make sure that we can do the best we can and doing all we can. And I also want to thank the Board of Education and, and my bosses for you know having the, the courage and the insight to make tough decisions and do what they have to do, and we appreciate it. And uh, we're going to do the very best we can to keep things cranking. So that's what we have for you. Thank you very much for all your support to this end. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. K. Keep that music and keep those arts coming. Go ahead with your name and address, please. Mark Senior, 302 Montpelier, Bay Harbor Township, New Jersey. Go ahead with your public comment. You're live streaming. Go ahead with your comment. Hello, my name is Mark Senior. I live at 302 Montpelier, Bay Harbor Township, New Jersey. I'd just like to thank everyone for all the hard work that they do every single day. Uh, I have a child who's a type 1 diabetic who has excelled in this school district. Uh, athletically, she's excelled through both the school district and in the programs offered through Egg Harbor Township. My greatest concern is that she is not able to participate actively in the school programs that are offered, for instance, for basketball and baseball. And academically, this child has exceeded all of our expectations. I would ask that you make every effort possible to allow our children to return to school, to be educated in the way that our taxes are provided. I do respect the very fact that everyone's concerned about COVID-19, but what we must be conscious of is that we all have a job to do and we cannot allow our children to be displaced so I just ask you, allow them to come back to the classroom. There are spaces within gym, gymnasiums, libraries, classrooms, outside. Let our kids come to school, allow the teachers to educate them. And most of all, I thank you for all the work that you do. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Okay, you're live streaming. Name and address, please. Hi, it's Debbie Off, 27 Stony Creek Drive. Go ahead with your public um, comment. I've, thank you. I have two questions. One is the survey that was sent out. I, I, it's very interesting to me to know the results, um, maybe see what the percentage of what parents wanted and what we're receiving. And for the surveys out to come, as this goes along, if you can make it public, the parents can see, you know, the end results of the surveys. My second question is regarding the virtual learning. Um, I, I heard you saying um, it's going to be more like classes, which is wonderful. But is, is it going to be videotapes? Is it going to be YouTube teaching? Is it going to be the teacher live? And on that part of it, 
are they going to be sitting there for four hours or do they get a 20-minute break here, 10-minute break there? And that's my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, those comments. And uh, I think as we've uh, stated earlier, uh, we will be revamping our virtual programs. And uh, if there's anything you want to add, Doc, but thank you for that comment. I think you handled it. Uh, I was just writing down um, the question as well as uh, the needs. Um, but but yes, there'll be breaks. The children will be uh, following the schedule. Um, it will be live in instruction, but it may be a combination of uh, videos or taped uh, lessons. It's depending on uh, the presentation. Sometimes teachers will present something um, in, in video fashion and then um, go back and, and teach to that video or, or explain that video or have class collaboration uh, regarding that video. So, um, you know, it's going to be a combination of all kind of things, the things that happen in classrooms as well. Okay, we do have another caller. You are live streaming. Go ahead with your name and address. Go ahead with your comment. Good evening. I'm just curious, what does the survey show as far as how many uh, on the, the hybrid plan versus how many plan. Okay, is that your, is that your comment? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I had a little trouble hearing, but I mean, I think, you know, just in terms of survey, uh, I, you know, I just want everyone to understand that we take public input very, very seriously. But what folks have to understand is we got new guidance Wednesday night. So the surveys predated Executive Order 175 that we just got last Wednesday night. We do have another caller if you're ready. You are live streaming. Go ahead with your name and address, please. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Kurtz. I'm 104 Lighthouse Lane, Oak Harbor Township. I have two things I'd like to address. Uh, one, um, first off, thank you guys for making a hard decision. Um, with this, for the first thing, is there going to be a way for the parents to share information so we can have like study groups for the kids and such? My daughter is going to the third grade, and it's good social skills for the kids, plus they also do a lot of group activities, so there's something like that for them. Uh, second thing would be after this pandemic calms down or whatever else with it, um, we need to have some sort of like cleaning schedule right for the school. So like I know you guys are looking at two days on, then having like a day of cleaning, and another second group's next two days, the other day of cleaning. We just need to make sure it's like structured like that for that whenever we get to that point. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, yes. All, all good ideas, all to be taken into consideration, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. If uh, Stephanie Ponzetti is still listening, or Kim Barnes, please try to call back. Uh, we were on hold and we lost you in between. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, name and address, please. Thank you very much, yes. If you can mute your television, you are live streaming. Okay, um, Kim Kramer, 101 La Mesa Court. And what is your public comment? Um, just like many of the comments that came before me, I don't envy the tough position that the decision makers are in, so I do want to thank the board and the administrators for meeting constantly all summer long. I'm sure it was very time consuming task. So I do thank you for all of your efforts. Um, I guess my question is um, with the, the decision that's going remote, I understand you're going to have to revamp some, you know, pieces of the plan because it's going to be totally remote now. I am just thinking 
for the bigger picture here, are teachers going to still be reporting to their buildings? And if that's the case, how many of those teachers will then have small children that are at home unattended because those teachers are physically reporting to the buildings? Or are teachers going to be able to be remote as well, just like the students? Thank you. I, Doc, I believe that they would be remaining remote for the most part, but I'll defer. Uh, yes, Mr. Castellano, and that's going to vary district to district. Um, again, because our district is extremely large, um, having all teachers in the building um, on with virtual instruction um, presents a bandwidth problem for us. Um, we reviewed this over and over and over in the feedback and uh, guidance that we got from our IT department is we simply do not have enough bandwidth um, to accommodate everyone in the building. So again, we will be communicating with our teachers um, and um, because I do hear there are some teachers that would like to come in and, and be in their classroom and, and use their resources and, and transmit from there and teach from there. And um, quite frankly, I'm fine with that. So we, um, it will be optional. And um, again, we will communicate with our teachers um, how that would work, who's interested in coming in, because of course I kind of have to get a number because I don't want a bandwidth problem uh, to occur. And if that does happen where we have an abundance of, of um, teachers that want to come in, then maybe we have to put them on a, on a rotating basis. But we've, we've thought of all those things. We've went down into those rabbit holes and discussed um, uh, that situation and uh, we are prepared to communicate uh, with the teachers, gain feedback from them and then you know be flexible and offer options to them. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, we have another caller. Um, you are live streaming. Name and address please. It's Alina Manzini, 206 Fenton Avenue, Egg Harbor Township. Go ahead with your public comment. Um, I missed the beginning of the meeting, so I'm just trying to figure out what changed from them having the two half a days to now having nothing when the cases are going down in Atlanta County. And if they're doing virtual, why are they sticking to a half a day schedule? I don't really see how much they can learn in 20 minutes. My son's in advanced classes and last time he played video games all day because he was done his work in 10 minutes. And I just don't understand how they can play sports but they can't go to school. And for a key club, I mean, do they get to do that or is it all about sports and learning comes last? Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that comment. I think if you uh, go back and review when this plays, uh, you'll have uh, your questions answered. Okay, you are live streaming. Name and address, please. Bethany Lagreto, 118 Leo Avenue. Go ahead with your public comment. Okay. My question is, we knew for two months this was a possibility of going all virtual. Yet every comment and every question people are asking, we keep getting an I don't know or we'll look into it. As a parent, I have to have a backup plan for my child. As a teacher, you have to have a backup plan in case you're sick for a substitute. How come we're being left in the dark with what's going on and just getting an all look into it? Why does it feel like nobody's prepared for this? Thank you. Well, thank you for your comment. I think there are some details we need to look in, but I uh, into, but I think we are overall very well prepared. I, I would also to add um, that I, I encourage um, the public to um, tune into our, our, our website and also um, social media, where I release every Monday. Um, a district update in um, Dr. Guccio's um, district newsletter. So I do communicate updates every week uh, as to what we're doing and where we are in terms of um, our current reality. Thank you. 
Okay, you are live streaming. Please state your name and address again. Uh, Monica Fajeda Calix, address 2720 Tire, Go ahead with your public and comment. My, my comment question is um, the high school students. Um, so I guess we here we're going virtual. Uh, my question is about the sport. Are sports going to continue? Are sports going to be canceled till further notice? Kids have started practicing. So I just um, want to know when we're going to be informed on how it's going to proceed. Thank you. Okay, so we did answer that one already uh, briefly that uh, sports will continue in accordance with the state association. Uh, if the season uh, is canceled competitively, we will still make sure our students stay as active as we are able to keep them uh, in there, whether it's sports, the arts, whatever clubs or activities that they're interested in, we're going to do our best for them. Anything else anyone wants to? We do have another comment. You are live streaming. Please state your name and address. At 1411 Go ahead with your public comment. I'm not sure if I missed it, but um, how are they going to differ how they accommodate for the IEPs this year? As with the IEPs last year, my son struggled greatly. I mean, the teachers, I guess, tried their best, but I mean, he's given the same exact workload with the same exact time frame that it needed to be returned in, but very little extra help as he requires you know, like one-on-one. -on -one. We, we appreciate that comment. I'm going to see if Doc wants to chime in. We, we definitely understand uh, our special needs population. We will do our best for them as we have been under these circumstances. Exactly, Mr. Castellano, um, Mr. Santilli, I know you've been working closely like almost every day with our special education supervisors as we're waiting for a director of special education to join us. Um, and and you've, you've had those discussions as well um, about IEPs and meeting the needs of our students, um, which is very, very important to us. And I do not have any callers on queue. If you want to put the slide up to call um, our number, thanks. Okay, we do have another caller. Please state your name and address. You are live streaming. Thomas Finnegan, 2062 Ocean Heights Avenue. Go ahead with your public comment. I'm just curious if there is going to be any testing or any way to monitor the students, um, comparing it to what they have learned in school as opposed to remote. Because I know my both of my children Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yes, is my short answer. And we do have another caller. You are live streaming. Please go ahead. Name and address, please. Nicole Resnick, 102 Rockport Drive. 
Egg Harbor Township. Go ahead with your public comment. Okay, I just had, um, again, I understand the stress that you've all been going through trying to figure out the logistics of everything. I work with child care for essential employees, so we're constantly, you know, getting different guidelines on a daily basis from the state, so I empathize with what you're going through. I just have a question in regards to come October 23rd. Um, I don't think we're ever going to get to the point where it's, you know, all virtual to 100% back at school. I mean, that would be a perfect if it does. So are there plans come, you know, are we going to get kind of updates leading up to October, October 23rd? Like, we think we're going to continue with the virtual learning, or we are going to introduce this new hybrid thing to see how it goes with that. Um, just kind of like where your um, thought process is with all that. Um, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We're going to do our best to keep you updated through our webpage, social media, through our meetings, um, and we will be re constantly assessing and reassessing the situation as that date nears. Okay, you are now public streaming, uh, public comment streaming, live streaming. <laughs> it's been a long day, I'm sorry. Go ahead with your name and address, please. <laughs> Hello, good evening. My name is Patrice Dawson, and I reside at 308 Jefferson Avenue. And I'm just going to say that, first of all, thank you for all of your hard work. I know back in March it was such a large transition, and there were so many different people with many different views. And even the decision that was based for tonight um, as like I said, my son is special needs, but I just want to say thank you for taking into consideration. I feel like if this measure saves at least one child, if it saves at least one child, it's all worth it. I'm sure we may have different um, educational gaps or different things that I'm sure in due time we could work, um, as they say, EHG Strong, to work together to help our children to become where they are. But if this measure saves at least one person, I think it's very well worth it, including our children, our staff members, our teachers, our administrators. So I just wanted to say thank you. And um, you guys keep your heads up and, as we say, EHG strong. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment. Excellent point. And we have another caller. Oops. You are live streaming. Go ahead and repeat your name and address, please. Jennifer Brady, 112 Douglas Avenue. Go ahead with your comment. I came in very late to this. Are they starting school in September or is this being pushed back again? Okay, so I'm I'm gonna recommend first that you, you know, watch watch the tape of the meeting to get it, you know to get all that's been shared. Um, but I guess the, 
short answer is school is starting. Uh, however, we are going to be uh, voting uh, shortly to accept uh, whether to accept administration's recommendation to be virtual uh, for a period of time until October and then uh, to, to begin uh, a uh, hybrid of virtual and in-person at that point in time. Okay, you are live streaming. Name and address, please. Kim Brusher, 301 Hidden Oak Road. Um, thank you guys tonight for all the information. I had one question. We are new to the school district. Um, we're a military family, and my daughter is going to be starting kindergarten. My question is, is I am not understanding the difference between the talent program versus uh, in class learning because it seemed like at the talent program that they would be doing learning and lunch and, and all that and I know you pay additional for it um, but I guess I'm trying to figure out the difference between the two. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna, I, I think we can delineate that Yes, we can. Um, Mr. Santilli, if you'd like to do that, um, go right ahead. Uh, I'm delegating tonight. I'd be glad to, but. Okay, Dr. Gruccio. So ultimately, um, the Talents Program will be there to provide a service to the community. Um, should there be a need uh, to provide really child care, uh, we will have the ability to, to service um, a, a specific number of uh, families uh, and students. Um, you know, while we are 100% remote. Uh, once that transition begins to take place and we get into hybrid, then of course that model uh, for Talons will change as well. Um, and then of course we'll be able to uh, still continue to service the students that are, are um, let's say, uh, in, in school for in-person learning. Um, you know, continue, to, uh, continue to evolve uh, that program moving forward, so. That kind of is the, the differential there. Um, we'll be able to provide um, supports as needed uh, for, for virtual instruction, as well as you know our normal programming. We don't look at it as just child care, of course, uh, for before and after care. It's, it's really truly an enrichment um, you know, experience for the students that participate. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, we. Uh, we are going to take all questions. Um, we've been um, running a, a. This has very been been lengthy, but it's worth it, and it's very productive. What I'd like to do is I'm going to open this public comment period to questions on any topic. I think everyone's interested in one topic, but so that we can combine our comment periods um, for efficiency's sake. Um, any we will take questions on the agenda and any topic uh, during the rest of this comment period. Uh, we'll, we, we will answer, respond to any questions or comments that you have, um, and we'll combine it into one comment period. So anything you have, let us know. Questions, comments, we will take all. We have no callers in queue. If you want to go ahead and put the sign up.
The streaming is delayed about 30 seconds, so we're going to wait another 30 just to make sure there's no other callers on the line. And again, we will take questions not only on the agenda, but on anything, questions or comments on any topic now uh, so that we can consolidate our, our public comment uh, period. We appreciate all the questions and comments that have come in. Uh, we've been trying our best to address all of them. Um, they're very important. This is an important meeting. So we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. The sign has been up for about a minute. If you want to go ahead and continue with the meeting. Okay, so again, th thank, uh, thank, uh, I want to thank everyone in the public for questions and comments. Um, they were all very useful and helpful. Um, we did try our best to, to address as many and, and as much as we could. Um, and uh, I'd, I'd encourage everyone to please go back um, and watch the, the re, uh, the re uh, broadcast so you can especially hear if you missed it, uh, Dr. Gruccio's initial presentation. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna uh, try to move us a little expeditiously. We're gonna move into finance operations um, and I'm gonna look for a motion and a second and then we'll, we'll have a uh, uh, discussion with any updates. So can I have a motion for 7.1 through 7.7. .7. Mrs. Sullivan. Mr. Price, I'll second that. And Mr. Price, second. Is there any discussion, any update uh, that we need for finance and operations? Um, Mr. Price, I have a question on purchases 7.2. Would that be coming up now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I have a question and I did send an email in and I got a, a response, but I just want a clarification. It's on the uh, bucket truck, uh, $111,750. It's a uh, Ford F550 bucket truck. Um, just a question as far as the, um, the purchase. Um, it, it was not purchased under state contract, but what it, was it put out to competitive bid? Uh, I understand that um, Littleston Ford responded, but uh, it was put out to competitive bid to, so that others could, uh, um, could bid on this as well. Is that correct? I just wanted to clarify that. Sure. Thank you for the question, Mr. Price. So with um, New Jersey state contract purchasing and actually New Jersey purchasing laws, uh, we were able to purchase directly with a vendor who was um, awarded a bid or a contract from either the state of New Jersey or one of our ed service commissions or co-ops. Um, in this particular case, Buyer Ford was the award winner for state contract for any Ford um, anything 250 or higher, be it you know van, transit vans, or bucket trucks, or anything along those lines. So we went there first, and the price was above our budget for our lease purchases. So then um, we have purchased last year through Lilliston Ford through better pricing. Um, so we reached out to them to do apples to apples comparison, and they came in more than 10% better than state contract. Um, with purchasing laws, I'm able to just purchase directly with them for having an apples to apples comparison and beating the state contract pricing. So we went that route. I could have done a competitive contract or even just a regular bid, um, but it would have delayed everything by 30 days or more. So we just able to say, we're able to save the district more than 10% not using state contract and going with a different vendor. Okay, so my question is then, it did not go out to competitive. It did not go out for bid, no. Thank no. you, that answers my question. No problem, thank you. Any other discussion on finance and operations? Seeing none, may I have a roll call? Again. Okay, Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? I saw your lips, but it wasn't audible. If you want to just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, yes. There you go, thank you. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We're going to go ahead and move to curriculum. Uh, if I could have a motion for 8.1, please. Mr. Price, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. 
Mr. Price and Mrs. Bird. Is there any discussion or updates on curriculum? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to look for a uh, roll call, please. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Okay. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to personnel. So first I'm going to ask for a motion on 9.1 through 9.5. Motion, Mrs. Sullivan. I'll second it. Mrs. Thank Sullivan. And, and just, for just for clarification, Mrs. Elko, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we did have not, we did not have any items for transfers or for resignations. So it's now resolution for 9-1 through 9-3. That is correct. Okay. Yep. And I will take Mrs. Sullivan and Mrs. Bird as a motion in a second. Okay, is there any, any discussion on personnel? Seeing none, may I have roll call please? Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Moving to policy, I'm going to ask for a motion on 10.1 through 10.5, please. So made. Mrs. Was Salagi? Thank you. I'll second the motion. Second, Mr. Mr. Del Barca. Any discussion on policy? Okay, mostly second, mostly second readings uh, this evening. Uh, seeing none, uh, I'll ask for a roll call. Mr. Del Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Gilbert, Moses Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thanks everyone. So now we're at old business. Um, the motion I'm looking for is a motion to revise our road back plan as outlined by our administration this evening. I'll make uh, the motion. Ms. Floyd is second. Okay, so we have a, a motion and a second, and uh, I'm going to ask for discussion. I'm going to ask Dr. Gruccio if she would quickly just summarize again, perhaps for our audience and then any board uh, members uh, will, will have board discussion. Sure, Mr. Castellano. Um, basically due to um, unclear guidance, short amount of time, um, I propose for Egg Harbor Township School District to begin the 2020-21 school year um, on September 8th. Um, as all virtual for all learners and all virtual instruction would uh, proceed until October 23rd with uh, progress checks along the way. Very good, thank you. So I'll open it up for uh, discussion, board members. Yes, I have a um, question, comment. Um, Dr. Ruccio, I want to thank you very much for the information that you presented us today. I know that it was an impossible situation that you are being put in right now, and it's a situation that unfortunately is not going to make everybody happy. Um, I feel for our students who 
you know, can't be face to face and meet their teachers and see their peers every day. Um, you know, I'm disappointed that they can't go back to school. Um, you know, with that said, we're here to support you and we need to follow your guidance. Um, I do have just two quick questions. Um, I know that as of right now, high school sports can still be played. Um, you know, discussion was when we were doing the AABB model, students were going to be bused home and then bused back for those sports. Well, now that students are not in school, will the parents be um, the ones who will have to take them to the sport or will the busing, you know, will that, will students be able to be bused back? That's a good question and um, something that has not been discussed at my level. I don't know if Dr. Heary um, has, or has been in discussions with anyone, but it certainly will be uh, on our list of items to address in our, in our administrators meeting. Doc? We had uh, discussed about transportation issues if we were going to start off with an A, a and a BB schedule. And of course, circumstances beyond our control has kind of uh, fogged that plan. And we've had to make uh, different decisions and going in different directions. But uh, we will be in touch with transportation tomorrow morning uh, prior to our administrators meeting, um, inform them of the new strategy and uh, incorporate their concerns and questions in terms of how we can come up with strategy to provide transportation. Thank you. Um, another question, when we do go back to school, um, what types of PPE has been ordered for staff? Well, I can tell you off the top of the head, off the top of my head, um, cloth masks uh, for staff and students and backup sets. Uh, we have shields, gloves, um, face shields, um, gowns, sanitizer. You missing anything, gang? My staff? The clear masks. Um, yeah, we're also, yeah. yeah. Oh, the clear mask for the, uh, uh, the students can see. Great. Uh, thermometers everywhere, yeah. Okay, great. Um, thank you. And then one other um, comment. I'm wondering, I know that, you know, a lot of people are calling in and they're concerned about social emotional, you know, especially in middle school and high school levels, you know, it's really hard not to be around your peers. And, you know, some parents are noticing some depression within their students. And it's great that sports are still being able to be played at this time. But not every student is an athlete. I'm just wondering if maybe there's some sort of online um, club or activities students, you know, could potentially join just so they stay more involved with their peers? Good question, good point. Right now we are doing uh, an assessment of our clubs and activities. Um, Dr. Harry is overseeing that as well. He's been in touch with uh, Mr. Pellegrino and um, we have taken that into consideration and we are, we are working on that right now. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. That's it for me. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Summer. I saw Mrs. Salagi next. Yes, I think uh, we really can't imagine the agony that Dr. Gruccio has gone through to make this decision. Um, my question is, if we, if we support this tonight, do we have to wait until October 23rd? If things change, can we come back before that and have the students and staff in? The way the resolution is written, Barbara, it's to submit it to the county and also to allow it to be amended based on guidance and information. So at that point, if Dr. Gruccio has a plan in place, if information is earlier, if she has a transition plan or any other information, um, she would be able to go ahead and make that recommendation and let the board know that that's what she would be doing. I see. Okay, thank you. Board members, other board members, questions or comments? Uh, this is Mr. Price. I just have a comment before we vote. Um, I would just like to say that I am still for the hybrid. I think most of us are, but um, if the superintendent feels that we really aren't, are not ready, um, then I'm going to vote yes for the full virtual. So I just wanted to add that comment in there. And it was a great presentation, a lot of good questions. 
um, and tough decisions tonight. So um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other any other board members? I see Mrs. Berg. Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to echo what everyone else was saying that this has been um, an unreal time period for you, Dr. Gruccio, and um, I can't say how much. I'm just very proud to contribute to this district, even during these super difficult times. And while this um, is not ideal for anyone, for teachers, for children, for parents, for for us, um, I think safety is what you're putting first. And I really appreciate that as a parent and a community member. Um, my concern uh, after hearing a lot of the comments tonight were about our special education students and how we are going to reach their needs, their individual needs, and their learning differences in a more impactful way than maybe we were able to in the spring. And I want to add to that, um, I know that our teachers and our staff worked very hard in the spring and, you know, there was no playbook. So I'm not in any way trying to criticize what our special education uh, community did. However, um, it does sound like from a parent perspective in the calls that, you know, that, that a lot of parents are concerned. So I hope that we have some professional development planned uh, that is sooner rather than later to assist with differentiating over a virtual format. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bird. Other, other board members' comments? Anything else, board members? Mrs. Gilbert Floyd, yes. Go ahead, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. I got my mic on mute. I got it unmuted now. I just, oh, well, first of all, I want to say I thought we had a stranger jump on our board meeting over there for a minute, but I see it's Mr. Ellis. <laughs> He's he's fashioning our newest uh, gear. That is that what you ordered for the staff, Dr. Gruccio the Bass? But anyway, we gotta laugh so we don't cry, right? So, um, I just want to. Say, I think everyone has already said, you know, how much agony or distress or just a lot of work went into um, the planning. And I know this was a like you said, a tough decision, and there, and unfortunately, there are going to, you know, this is not going to be able to meet everyone's needs um, in the district. But I do agree um, with what Ms. Burr said in reference to putting the the, the safety of the staff, students, um, everyone from the whether it's the teachers, whether it's the principals, the custodians, the secretaries, um, just putting that um, in the forefront. Um, and I guess my, you know, the one thing that one uh, one parent called in and she said, um, if it saves one person, you know, if it saves one person, um, it was worth it all, you know, and, and there's no guarantee of anything with, like I said, with this situation that we've all been put in. But I just want to say that I definitely am super proud to be a part of Acre Harbor Township uh, as a parent. And it's not an easy decision, you know, it's a tough decision as a parent because I have two young children that I have to be home as well. And um, in the education field, it's a tough decision too. So I just wanna say thank you to everybody. I want this, just thank you to all our board members, um, Dr. Guccio, <laughs> Mr. Santelli, <laughs> um, Dr. Heary. And it's been it's been a great experience, a tough one, but I just wanna say to the A Cover Township residents who are watching, I know you know, it's a torn situation. Some people feel one way or the other, but um, we are EHT strong, and we we will get through it. It's gonna be a tough one, but we'll get through it, and it'll it'll we'll get through it. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. I see Mr. Ellis next. Okay, I just had to thank. Um, uh, Dr. Guccio, sometimes you have to be careful for what you ask for. 
<laughs> and I really, you got to repeat. I really feel for you and your staff, you're doing such a great job, and I know it's very difficult. You know, we got to find out, like they said, something we can do with the uh, kids after the uh, visual part um, part on uh, online. You know, maybe we have, uh, you know, instead of gym, have some kind of games where they could use the computers when they could connect with their friends online after all their schoolwork is done. But this is a trying time. That's why I had to do a little sense of humor. If we was going back to me, I purchased this for all the board members. You know. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, we need a little humor in this because this is a very depressing state, and we are doing the best we can. It's not just here; it's everywhere. So, just keep the faith. This too shall pass, and make sure you just hang in there and you're doing a great job. I'll get mine in the mail, Mr. Ellis. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Other board member comments or questions? Other board members? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not seeing any. I'll, uh, you know, I'm just going to close it out briefly uh, by just repeating, you know, what I said at the outset. Um, this is a difficult time, and we're doing the best we can under difficult circumstances. We all want to see school be back to the way it was. We all want to see our world be back to the way it was. But I think that under the circumstances, this is the best that we can do to not only keep the students' education moving forward, but also to um, realize that a top priority among top priorities is the health, safety, and welfare of our students and our teachers and our staff and of their family and of their loved ones. And so this decision tonight takes all of those things into account and does the very best that we can at this point in time under difficult circumstances. So I will be supporting it. And with that, I will ask for a roll call. Thank you. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? A big yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Gruccio. Thank you, administration, for all the hard work. Thank you, board members, for your patience, your hard work, and your indulgence. This is not easy at all. Not at all. We are going to move to new business. I'm going to ask for a motion on 12.1 through 12.10, please. This is Mr. Wait. Price. I make that motion. Motion and second. Do we have a second? I'll second. I believe 12.5 has been removed. Yeah, that was my comment. <laughs> we will have 12.5 uh, back in uh, for our September meeting. Is there any discussion or I'm updates necessary on new business? Was that Mrs. Bird as the second? I just wanted to confirm because it was at the same time. Okay, thank you very yes. much. Yes. Okay. Is there any discussion on new business items? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a uh, roll call, please. Oh, Mrs. Sloggy, question? Um, I had heard something about no school on election day. And that is not uh, on this calendar. Is that something that we have to do? Is that something that we're going to do? Or is this the calendar? Good question. Uh, we, we pondered that. We looked at today. Looked at that today. Um, but I mean, there's no need to um, move or adjust the calendar because of the governor's announcement. Uh, we, we announced that schools are closed that day, but we can have virtual instruction that day. Okay. So we're good. Okay. 
very good. And obviously, we we have time before November if we did have to make a calendar adjustment. And any other uh, questions or comments on new business? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes, yes, yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan? I will be abstaining on 12.10 and rest, yes to the rest. Thank you. Mrs. Summer? I will also be abstaining on 12.10 and yes to the rest. Thank you, Mrs. Salagi. Yes. Mrs. Bird? Uh, yes to everything, but I am also abstaining to 12.10. Thank you. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay, at this point, um, just in terms of board calendar, um, I do not believe we have a need to meet on August 25th. I did ask for everyone to just pencil that off on the calendar. Um, should should a, uh, a situation arise, well, of course, at any time during this pandemic, we may have to call a meeting. But at this time, I don't see the need to call a meeting on August 25th. Um, so we will be back uh, in September unless it's necessary for some reason. We will, of course, call an emergency meeting uh, should a circumstance dictate it. Um, and I'm going to look to see if there are any final comments from board members and then administration uh, before we adjourn. It's been a very long night. There was a second public comment, comment Mr. Castellano. Um, so what I did was I had asked for pu public on any any topic okay. just to okay. just to consolidate because it had, you know. Gotcha, sorry about that. Been quite lengthy. So, but okay, I see Mrs. Bird and then Mr. Della Barca. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to comment, a lot of parents called in because they have early, early childhood um, age children, a lot of going into kindergarten and they're fearful because the students don't have the skills yet to use the computer or to read. But as a kindergarten teacher myself, I will assure you that there is not a day that's going by that our kindergarten teachers are probably not planning and, um, and preparing so that your child, while this is not the kindergarten experience that we may have all experienced, I assure you that teachers are going to make it a great experience for your child and are working hard to make sure that they get all the skills they need and I just wanted to say that because I am a kindergarten teacher and I am worried about the same things you're worried about but I'm telling you uh, every ounce of my being is being poured into how to make this awesome for our for my students and I know that our kindergarten teachers in this district are doing the same thing so please just trust in the process um, it will all be okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. Excellent comments. Mr. Del Barca is next. And just a few comments. Uh, piggybacking on what Mrs. Bird just said, as a longtime principal of kindergarten grade level, even at one time in the district, we had an entire building that was all kindergarten. Um, and of a grandfather who has a child, a grandson going into kindergarten. Uh, I know that the kindergarten teachers are really preparing on how to deal with uh, dealing with all their new kids on the first day of school, especially in the beginning of the year, and training them on how to deal with virtual education. And I love the uh, experience that I believe our district's going to be provide for the meet and greet idea. I think that's wonderful. And I think that that'll be very helpful to the kindergarten students and to the parents and to the teachers. So that's just another comment. Uh, Pete, I wasn't sure if you were still going to bring up a discussion about us having virtual meetings or not or in-person meetings as a board of education. Uh, I thought you had said something earlier that possibly we're gonna bring that up again uh, regarding our next meeting. Uh, am I right, Pete, on that or not? <laughs> um, what, what I had planned to do, Lou, was just as we've been doing, as we get closer to our next meeting where we're all together, I'll poll the board. 
Well, I was going to recommend that since we are all virtual through October 23rd, I don't think that's necessary. I think we stay as virtual Board of Education until we do go back to school. And if that happens in at the end of October or November, then possibly we go to in-person meetings. But I don't think we need to have that discussion and, and uh, 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 vote uh, before each of our next meetings. I think that we know we're going to be a virtual district till October 23rd. So I think our meetings can be held virtually until that time. And then when we get near the end of October, we can have a discussion about the uh, going back to in-person meetings at the end of October or November or whatever the uh, district decides to do at that time. That's all. I want to have to thank everybody. I, everybody had a chance to thank Dr. Cuccio and her team. Outstanding work. I know as a former elementary principal, I'm glad I'm not there doing this. Uh, that you folks have done such hard work and such effort, and I think we made the best decision we possibly could under the circumstances. And uh, our district will proceed and progress and continue to do all the good things that we do. We have outstanding people that work here. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Any any other board members? Yes, this is Mr. Price. I just have a comment in closing. Uh, do I have it? Sure, sure, yes. Okay. Well, again, yeah, I wanted to thank everybody as well and um, the Road Back Committee. I mean, I know we mentioned them towards the beginning, but without them, we wouldn't have gotten a, a lot of these things accomplished. Um, so we appreciate all the hard work that the Road Back Committee uh, put into this. And uh, I know it's been a long night. And again, um, I think we made the right decision and um, looking forward to the next meeting. So whether it's virtual, in person, most likely it'll be virtual, but I guess we'll wait and see. So thanks again, and everybody have a good night. Any other board members? Uh, uh, I just want to know what we decided. I heard Mr. Delabarca's recommendation. Are we just waiting? Are we doing that tonight? I would, I'm, I'm sorry. OK, so okay. and, and I, I, I appreciate uh, Mr. Delabarca's point, and I think that most likely it makes sense for us to continue virtually. However, I, I want to make sure that it's a democratically uh, arrived at decision. So I will so, okay. pull the board before okay. our next meeting, okay. which is our next work meeting, September 15. I'll pull the board through the email with uh, okay. Mrs. Anaya like we did before when we get together on the 15th I'll again poll. I just, you know, I, I feel it's important that this, the decision be made, you know, democratically by the majority. Oh, uh, I agree with that. I just wanted to but, make sure yeah. we're doing it tonight. I, I do agree. Uh, well, I think because there's so much time between now and then, um, I think I'll, you know, I'll poll as we get closer. But I, I, you know, so I'm agreeing. I guess I'm agreeing with both sides. I, I think it makes sense for us to say stay virtual personally but I think it uh, be in light of what we're you know doing district wide uh, but at the same time that needs to be a decision made by the majority of the board I don't I don't think I'm you know the one to make that call that'll be made by you know the board and the majority will rule and I just want to say I'm, I'm clear I was clear on that mr. Uh, mr. Okay. President. I understand you want to be the majority rule I have no problem I don't think that it should be a decision made by one person I was just making sure, clarifying that we're going to do it closer to the meeting via email or whether we were doing it tonight. That was the only, um, just really clarification gotcha. uh, that I just wanted to make sure. And just to, and and I just want to say that all the comments that came in, um, those that were in support of the uh, plan and those that even weren't, that I just I just hope that the public knows that we heard everyone and that we understand that you know the the problems that it could pose. To, to families and, and to people that have to go to work. Um, and like you said, it, it was a tough decision, but just wanted to put that there. We heard everyone's comments. Very good. Thank you. Any other board members? Be uh, before I go to um, anyone from administration to close out, I just want to again uh, extend my thanks to 
Dr. Gruccio and administration for working so hard, our road back committee, board members, thank you so much. Um, our teachers, our staff, all of you do such a fantastic job. We appreciate all the public comment that we received tonight. We really did our best with all of it. Um, if we didn't get to every question or every part of your question, I would urge you to please go back and look at the replay of the broadcast, watch Dr. Gruccio's presentation, um, and if you still have questions, reach out to us. You know, there's many ways to reach out to us through our website, uh, contacting your, uh, your, your child's teacher. Um, make use of that, give us a shout, and, and we'll, we'll try our best to answer any questions or concerns. So I'll just turn it over to, to Doc for anything uh, before, we, before we adjourn. Yes, thank you, Mr. Castellano. I too want to say thank you, everyone. Thank you to the Board of Education for your support. Um, thank you um, for, you know, taking the time to ask the questions. Um, they're very important. Again, I always say feedback makes us stronger at what we do. Um, and remember, we are EHT. That's every hand together. And together, we're going to prevail and we're going to get through this. Um, and, and it's about teamwork and it's about supporting each other. Um, I'd like to thank my administration, um, you know, K through 12, um, but particularly my central office staff, Mr. Santilli, Dr. Heary, Chandra, Naya, uh, Dr. Charlton, and um, Ms. Ms. Elko, who uh, every day, eight days a week, we spend a lot of time throwing ideas past each other and, uh, you know, keeping each other um, in, in the race. And I couldn't ask for more knowledge, passion, and persistent in, in a group of people um, for holding me together through all this. So um, thanks again. Um, again, appreciate your support. And uh, we're going to get through this. I, I have to say it wasn't easy. I feel like a huge lift has been off my shoulders. But I also know tomorrow I, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to face my administrative team. And we're going to move forward with the, the plan that we now have in place and getting all the parts and pieces going. Um, so um, as we engage in this, it's important to me that, that I meet um, the student needs and provide them with a relevant education. And, and I know it's hard, but please keep in mind that education is paramount, but so is the lives of our students and our staff and our families. Okay, so again, I appreciate you persevering, persevering through this um, and with me, but most of all, I appreciate your trust um, and, your, and your believing in me and my staff. So thank you and good night. With that, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion, Ms. Floyd. I'll second, second. that motion. Um, Mr. Yes. Floyd, uh, Mr. Price, by acclamation, <laughs> good night, everyone, and thank good you. Good night. Good night. Okay, let me offer now. We are adjourned. <laughs>